Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Walt's Kitchen Table, where I feature captivating stories from fascinating people and talk about fascinating. Today's guest, Tommy Hilkin, one of the great storytellers I know. We talk about wrestling, sports, comedy, and video games on TV. So without further ado, Big Tommy Hilkin. Let's get to it. You don't want to swear? You're, yeah. a swear? you're a swearing guy. Depends on who listens to it, though. Everybody's going to be listening to yeah, it. Well. Oh, so you, you think this got to be G-rated? I don't know about G, but... PG-13? Oh, speaking well, it depends of... On, listen, it, hey. it, you know, if, if, it depends, if me and you were talking, right? Great. Me right? and you talking and recording, not so great. Yeah, well, I, okay, I give you that. But I was listening to this podcast, these guys that I really like, and... Uh, he, the one guy's in TV, right? He does a lot of, he's an actor. And it was crazy how he said that a TV, sh TV show, if the uh, person driving a car doesn't have his seatbelt on, it's TV mature. They have to label it TV mature wow. because he doesn't have a seatbelt on. Is there something wrong? Yeah. Yeah. But he said, you can do like a mock setup to where the guy's driving down the road with a seatbelt on, and the, the implication is of an, another guy or a woman or whoever is going down on him while he's driving, and then, like, spraying all over the, you know, the whole, like, mock blowjob thing, that's not, that wouldn't be right because he's got a seatbelt on. So that's TVG. <laughs> is that crazy or what? That's stupid. <laughs> yeah. Rules suck. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, well, you know, you got to kind of get them in there. Yeah. Just so you know, we're recording. Nice. I just want to give you a heads up. No F-bombs yet? Yeah, I just dropped one. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I don't know who's going to be listening to this. Oh, well, I'm hoping a lot. I'm hoping a lot of people are listening yeah, to it. But if it's our inner circle, I got to be careful. Yeah. Uh, no, that's. But the thing is, I, you know, I want you on here, and uh, you know, we're great friends, and right. you know, I. Uh, you helped me through a very dark time in my life, so well, nice. and uh, I always appreciate that. Uh, but thanks for coming down, dude. I don't Good know how far, how far did you come? I drove from Flanders, so it took me thirty minutes. Not bad, straight down eighty to two eighty. Well, everything in New Jersey is thirty minutes away. Yeah, everything. Everything. My wife says that to me. Everything. Yeah, everything. <laughs> if you want to go anywhere in Jersey, just uh, it's thirty minutes, thirty minutes, minimal. <laughs> No matter what. Yeah, you know, no, no matter, matter what. what. No, no matter what. Even if it's 45 minutes, it's 30. It's 30 minutes. It took a little longer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. That's a guy thing. I don't yeah, know if that's 30. a Jersey thing. Well, that's like the... How far uh, is it? 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Like my dad, my dad growing up all the time, man. He'd be like, it's up on the hill. Yeah. You're like, okay, dad, you give me an idea. What King... Like, we're out in Colorado uh, Springs and King Supers was a big grocery store out there. And there's multiple locations in Colorado Springs. I'm like, Dad, I'll meet you at King Supers. Which one are you going to? The one up on the hill. Uh, All right. Can, of hills, yeah, can, can, can you give me a little better idea of what hill you're talking about, Pops? No, you know, the one up on the hill. All right, dude, I'll figure it out. Yeah, you you yeah. know, just the same thing. You know, up on, up on the hill. Up on the hill. You know, down the street. Yeah, around the corner. Left, the right, at the rock that looks like a bear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the telephone pole that, you know, your second cousin's aunt hit. Yeah. 30 three years pole, ago. Go three poles up. Make a left at the street light. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> remember, they, but you think about it, honestly, what you're saying right now is they remember things by landmarks because there was no, you didn't get in your car and have what we have, MapQuest. Well, the and, G, yeah, GPS. GPS. I'm, a, I'm a slave. I tell people all the time, I'm a slave to the blue line, yeah. especially in New Jersey. Yeah. Some of these roads are fucking nuts. And, and it, it's crazy, but they had to remember where they were going. Yeah, I remember it's the same thing with me. You know, you you knew, like you're saying, on top of the hill. That's how he put it in his mind. That was his GPS that he built in his head. Yeah. He knew where the top of the hill it was. was. And that's all he cared about yeah. was how could he get where he had to get. Yeah, he knew we uh, he knew how to get where he wanted to go. Oh yeah. Now to describe that, that's something different. That's all nothing. Yeah. People even now people are like, Hey, come on over here. I'll see you at ten o'clock, but how you get here is this and I cut him right off. I go, just give me an address. Yeah. I'm a slave to the blue line. Wow. Oh. Even even to work. I know how to get to work every day. It's habit. I get in my car, my phone attaches directly to the uh, Bluetooth. 
Mm. And I hit my map quest and hit yeah. work. I drive to work every day, know how to get there blindfold, but I still put it on my map. It's um, It's been a big part of me. I, I remember uh, when I was going to gigs and in between gigs, I would, you know, I'd have to get to the first gig, right, by using a map. And well, I got to stop you. I got to stop you right there. Mm -hmm. you, so people listening don't understand gigs. Now we can, my 300 yeah. ring circuits of imagination can go pretty bad <laughs> with gigs. <laughs> so no, just real quick, explain who, who we are and what you do. I know, oh. it's, I know it's ways into the podcast. But well, you know, it's uh, never too late to introduce the, the great Tommy Hilkin. Whoa. Whoa. The great. You worked the great. really hard on that one. Yeah, I did. I, I brought it up from yeah. the bottom, dude. Uh, <laughs> usually when podcasts start or things like this, it's the incomparable. Incomparable? Tommy Hilkin. Can you spell incomparable? No. But I, In, <laughs> I am comparable. <laughs> Reading is fundamental. I know my phonics. <laughs> it's so, true. It's funny. I can say it pretty well. I'm not so sure I'd have to slow yeah, down to spell it. I'm the worst speller in the world. So, yeah, I'm, I'm an entertainer. I do comedy, magic. Uh, I do speaking and training. So when I say a gig, it's usually some sort of private event or a corporate event where I'm doing either as, as a speaker, a motivational speaker, or a training someone in front of a room, sales training, presentation skills training. But overall, my love of my life, I've been on stage my whole life. As this guy, Walt Blau, once said to me, Tommy, it's all you've ever done. Don't forget <laughs> oh, to tell people amazing. it's all you've ever done. Yeah. So all I've ever done has been on stage, and my love is to entertain. Uh, my background in comedy and magic is what I've done forever, the last 30 years. So I love it. So when I say a gig, it's usually a comedy magic gig. It could be somebody else. I do a lot of stuff with the microphone. But you know, you know it. If there's a microphone, I want to be holding it. So that's how it goes. Well, good thing you don't have to hold this one. Thanks. Uh, yeah. you, do you know what to do with your hands? Yes. Well, actually, I'm kind of lost. <laughs> you can hold You can pick it up and I'm hold it if you want. My hands are below the table. Use your hands. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, boy, isn't that crazy how they moved? Hey. Uh, what's his name? To hey, Cleveland. Oh, yeah. Hey, come on now. Right, hands on the table, Tommy. So what right. I'll do, though, in the show notes, I'll put your link to your website and Great. some pictures and stuff so people want to reach out to you. Yeah. And I got to tell you, one of the adult shows that I've seen you do was crazy. <laughs> it was amazing. I had no idea because the, the type of event, we were at a charity event, right, right for a friend that was, was ill and he unfortunately passed away, but... I thought it was going to be more of a family show because of the crowd and this app, but man, did it turn. Some of the stuff you threw out there was amazing, dude. Oh, it was so great. And then that one show that we came out to Booten and that you, I guess, emceed? Yeah. What would you call yeah, it? I emceed MC'd? the event, yeah. There was Axe there, and I just introduced the Axe and kept the uh, whole night flowing. Oh, That's my another God. another thing I do. I oh, dude, you're amazing at that. Yeah. Uh, my wife, Val, and I... We wanted to leave. It was, and we won't say who it was or anything <laughs> like that, but we wanted to leave like 15 minutes in. And I said, no, let's just hang out. And because each time, between each act, <laughs> you came out and we're just crushing it, man. You were just <laughs> slaughtering it. It was amazing, dude. So you yeah. were a very funny man. You were a very I mean, funny man. The, the idea of what it is with the coming out and doing the comedy, like I said. And when we did that comedy night, my blessing is... Uh, I'm very good at reading an audience and reading people and body language and facial expressions. You know, when you do as long as I do, I need people to play with. So I can see if they want to be G or PG. Yeah, so yeah. what happened that night at the benefit, which was what makes me smile, think you can't see my smile, but I'm smiling. Is, <laughs> you know, we just slowly raised oh. the flame. <laughs> well, so the, way you, the way you did it with the book thing, like, okay, we're going to go with the alphabet. And the way you went through the alphabet, and you're like, uh, what, was the, what was the one... What was your, your word? You walked by me before you went on, and you're like, if I say this word, it's going... I, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, remember? <laughs> oh, I do. All right. So usually I say if you hear the word cock. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it is. If, well, if that comes out anytime during my show, yeah. it's wide open. Yeah. We're going. We're and, going. And, it, and it was funny because you were like... So, yeah, I was driving down the road in a red car and cock, and then uh, then I took a left, and I was like, what, 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 did he just say that? Oh, my God, oh, yeah, here we go, here we go. <laughs> throttles off. That, that, that's, the, that's the safe word, that it's ready to go. <laughs> oh, and then, uh, what was it, because the alphabet, you yeah. were like, A, 
So, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't use the word asshole, so we won't say that anymore. And like yeah. the way you did it was, it was genius. Well, you know, genius. Com comics struggle now because of political correctness. You know that. Oh, oh, oh real quick. Yeah. So we had some, we had dinner last night with uh, some friends, and it was, it was a blast. And it was one yeah, of those. Great. We got there at like six o'clock at night. Beautiful place. They, it's this uh, old mill that they turned into an apartment complex so it looks over the passaic and all the falls and all that oh, it's nice. beautiful beautiful and uh i got to, uh, we just got talking as, as you can imagine everything you know the subject went all around and we got talking about exactly that and i quoted you i said man i got a good friend of mine he's a comic and up among other things and i said one of his go-to lines ever was great he says i have three kids one of each <laughs> and everybody last night laughed and i go the problem is, he says it falls flat nowadays because everybody's like, and okay, and, so <laughs> most people have three kids, one of each. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And all in one person. We don't tell them what their gender is. We yeah. let them decide. Yeah, yeah. What? what? Yeah. Stop that! Stop that! Yeah. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Yeah. So I can. I we can. Whew, that's a whole other rabbit that's hole. A whole yeah, story. yeah. But go ahead with the co the the thing is with the I agree with the political stuff with comics. So I had That's the whole point of the comic is to just tear that stuff apart, don't well, you tear, think? You tear people. Well, it's it's everybody. It, what, what comedy is based on is people's weaknesses and you know and strengths or whatever it might be. But weaknesses, you know, making fun of people, having fun with people while you're doing it. That's what it's always been. You know, listen, Henny Youngman. You know, years and years. Take my wife. Please. Yeah, yeah, know? yeah. The like, whole one-liner. You say that now, it's like, oh my God, this guy is. You know, he's going against take women. And, the Me Too movement should hop in on them. And, yeah, yeah. You know, and bottom line is, you know, I, I never go out of my way to hurt anyone. Like I said, I like to have fun with people. I'll be the first one. And you know, you and I, when we sit together, right? Verbal jab, it's a gunfight. Oh, oh, it's absolutely. a gunfight, dude. Absolutely. I'll say something to you. And I'll get hit back in the back of the head with something else. Yeah, yeah. Back foot because we enjoy that. But so many people. Yeah, but I don't take offense. I don't offend myself with what you're telling me. It's a joke. It's a, yeah. It's and, a and joke. I, I, I totally agree with yeah. that. Yeah. So I had to, you know, I had to reframe everything. That's why the thing you're talking about, the alphabet, I say, before we start tonight, I was giving a list of things that I can and can't say, so I'll go through the alphabet for you. And I just, you know, I get to A and I say, uh, asshole. I'm not allowed to say asshole. So, sir, tonight, there's no way I'm going to call you an asshole. <laughs> And then I get to the B word, which is fun. I look at a lady and I say, you know what? There's not a chance that you'll be a bitch tonight. Oh, yeah. There's no the way. C, I'm not allowed. Then the C word. Well, what about the C word? I skip right over. Yeah. <laughs> and I just leave it at that. Okay, so <laughs> let's go back to that benefit. When you hit E and you're talking about ethical yeah. or what? Well, what you, well that I didn't know what lady. to do. At first, I didn't know what to do with E. So I was like, estrogen. What can I make fun of? Because there's nothing that fits into E. So then I just went for it. I just said, all right, so we'll just do ethnic jokes. Okay. <laughs> and that whole Nike thing, dude. I about, I about pissed my pants when you pulled that up. And she loved it. She loved she it. She loved it. She was sitting in front of me. And I was mentioning about facial expressions and eye contact and body language. Right? If I didn't recognize how much fun she wanted to have, I would have never went there. Yeah, she yeah. was with me the whole night. She was to my left, but right in my eyesight. Yeah. And when you're doing, you know, when you're working, speaking, training, entertaining, you find that person who's going to be your go-to guy or yeah. go-to gal. If somebody turns their hot eyes and shies away from you, I leave yeah. them alone. Is that is that kind of like uh, what was it? Uh, the football movie, the com the comedy. It was a Happy Gilmore. Where he uh, Happy Gilmore was golf. Uh, who, what was the Oh, The Longest Yard? No, no. It was a comedy with Adam Sandler, and his mom wouldn't let him play football. No, no, sorry. Down at Louisiana or whatever it was. Damn it. What was the name of that movie? Anyway. Google it. Yeah, sure <laughs> no, no, no. yeah, right. Nowadays, you can Google it. I'd rather sit here and talk about well, it. Well, we found our first edit, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no. I ain't editing this shit out. This is good stuff. Come on. You want to look smart. This but, is your podcast. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I'm working on it. I'm helping you. I'm throwing you a bone. Uh there's a scene in that movie, Waterboy. Waterboy. Water Boy. Gotcha, I knew I'd, gotcha. I knew I'd get it eventually. Nice. So there's a scene in that movie where the guy was going to kick off, and he's like looking at the other team, and he's like eyeballing each one. He's like, where's my bitch? Where's my <laughs> bitch? Where's my bitch? 
And then he sees this guy, and he's like all shaking in his helmet. He's like, "There's my bitch." He kicks oh, it right yeah. to him, you know. But it's so it's getting the people to play with you. You don't want to you don't want to mess with the people who don't want to play with you. It's no, not fun. Why? That's suicide. Yeah, that would fun. be that would be suicide. Yeah, yeah. yeah but that many, lady. Too many comics make that mistake. They'll t- they'll try and attack the weak person instead of t- attacking the strong person. Too many guys makes that mistake. And you consider the strong person as the, oh as the person like staring at you and like engaged and with you are and with smiling the... and laughing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 You, you know what it's like. You look at that person and they turn their head. So know? who is, uh, comedy-wise, let's start with, who was an influence for you growing up? Well, I, I can tell you when it started out with my parents, uh, watching with my parents, Bob Hope was a genius. I love Bob Hope. When I was a kid, so I got to see Bob Hope because he was very, very funny and quick and right on. He had a cadence to his comedy. Oh, see, oh, I Bob. love a comic comic with awesome cadence. Cadence, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. You know, like hey, I'll tell you, you know, <laughs> it, it, boom, boom, boom. So it started with Bob Hope when I was a kid. I loved him because he could stand tall at the mic and deliver. He right. could deliver. And then uh, to take it to a silly extent, I got really into uh, Red Skelton. Oh, I. I grew up listening, watch. That was like a family thing with yeah, us. Yeah, because he was brilliant. Yeah, he was a bra- He was a true clown, uh, and at heart. So everything he did was to make people smile. Yeah. I mean, I think that was his mission in life. Not so much cracking up laughing, but you know, to make he made you smile like that. Yeah. So Bob Hope was a great storyteller and joke teller. Red Skelton was a clown. Loved those guys. And then I'd have to say, you know, growing up, then I hit the eighties. Became a big fan of Rodney. Rodney, no, of Rodney course. Dangerfield. I mean, geez, Just, how can you not like yeah. that guy? And what did I learn from Rodney? Uh, how to develop a character. You know, through my career, I, I always performed as Tommy Knucklehead. You know, and uh, it was a big part of my career, that branding. This is my, this is my executive producer. That's nice. <laughs> it's the cat. So, uh, you know, Rodney uh, developed a character, which became his brand, which is a good thing to do, no matter what you're doing in business, whatever it is. Right. You have to brand yourself as the comic. And another guy... That branded himself well, and it took good care of him. Was uh, I became a big fan of Dice, you know, Andrew Dice. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. come on, yeah. <laughs> what, was it was it uh, Rodney Dangerfield that was like, hey, my wife said take her somewhere she's never been before, so I took her to the kitchen. <laughs> her to the kitchen. Is yeah. that him? Yeah, was that him? He had all this. Yeah, my wife. Told he was me good to, with a, like a little one liner. Yeah, right? My wife told me to take the garbage out. I told her you cooked it. You take it out. <laughs> He could not get away oh. with that stuff. You know, another oh one. Oh, uh, yeah. A couple years ago when uh, uh, my wife and I first met, I brought up uh, Eddie Murphy Raw. Oh. Wow. Oh. Classic, dude. Classic. Classic. His Classic. Cadence, like going back to Cadence yeah. and timing, just boom, just destroy it. Like, oh, bam, bam, bam. Story. It was amazing. Again, storyteller. Storyteller. Yeah. Very, yeah. very good. Storytelling, real life stories that when he was a kid and growing up, and yeah. hysterical, you know, just, yeah. just great. And, you know, I got to tell you, you know, you talk about Rodney, and you know, Rodney always worked clean, and I always say I, I've always worked clean for most of my stuff, you know, and I just wrote out there. But the first time I ever heard Rodney curse, and I, I never forgot, it was like, yeah, I just sent my kid to college. He's majoring in fucking up. <laughs> <laughs> I just, uh, I was like, that's perfect. perfect. It's, yeah, it's yeah. not even a curse word if Rodney is. Yeah, yeah, put it in that context. Because that's what he was right? doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's he doing? He's fucking oh, up. It's great. So how about Bill Cosby? You were a Bill Cosby fan? I wasn't a fan of Bill Cosby, even though he was funny. I remember he. I remember one story of Cosby that he used to talk about. His father used to say, go get me something to whip you with. And I'd come back with a matchstick. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they, why not? Right? Think about what I just said in that whole joke. Though. Go get me something to whip you with. Yeah, That's yeah. what life was. right? Yeah, yeah. It wasn't Cosby, but I have to tell you, somebody who I thought was a genius. And uh, yay, women. I, I love women in comedy if they're I funny. I love funny. Joan, Joan Rivers. Oh, uh, never, never oh, watched her. Never. Joan Rivers was amazing. Was she? She was so funny. Yeah. 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 The little bit that I saw of her, I never saw like a stand up or a special oh. or something, but she, check it out. Can we talk? That was her always, that's how she opened up very, can we talk? And then she'd go into it. She was great. She you was know, great. Uh, Ellen DeGeneres? Is yeah. That how, yeah. Sure, Ellen. Yeah. I, I enjoy her stand up stuff. She's very funny. Yeah, she's like, there's this latest one we watched. I just walked in, the wife was watching it, and, and she made has this little story about her being rich and people like giving her, uh, crap about being rich you know like picking on her and she's like 
yeah, but I didn't care because I was sweeping this up and using my black card to sweep it up with, you know, and just like putting little pings in. <laughs> uh, she's shit. she's intelligent. I mean, she's. Uh, obvi- I mean, obviously, look at her. I mean, she's very successful. brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she's uh, terrific. You ever hear of Rodney Carrington? Only from you. Oh, but I figured dude, you got it. <laughs> yeah, I and saw must- some of it. We watched it. Oh, it filthy. <laughs> totally filthy, totally filthy. Guy's t- super bad, but he's super funny. I yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. I know I like you do. Yeah, I like you and your guy. wife will never sit through a Rodney Karen. Never, 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 no, never. It's not nope. gonna happen. It'll nope. be me and you. It'll, yeah, it'll be me and you. And my brother. <laughs> my brother loves him too. So there you go. I actually go out of my way to see him. Yeah. How about uh, Joe Rogan? You ever watch him? Uh, you know what? I, I really I know of him and his background, and he's. He's booming. He's got a big podcast. Yeah, guy. it's yeah. killing it out there. Yeah, and you know what? Took him over the top too. He got involved with the MMA, so it uh, you know really got. Yeah, he's got a lot of things going on. Yeah. I listen to his podcast. Smart guy. Yeah, but his stand up stuff, like he's got some net, uh, Netflix specials. They're funny, man. Yeah. He, he he's another storyteller and his timing and stuff. I I enjoy like uh, I really enjoy his stuff too. It's kind of funny. Musically, I got stuck in the seventies, which is not a bad thing. It was the greatest music. You remember of my it? Life. Though? Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> I still go to the shows. Oh, okay. All right. So, jogs your memory? <laughs> yeah, jogs my memories. And then I guess the comedy, I pretty much stayed in the 80s, you know? I, so, uh, in the 80s, it was Rodney. You know, Rodney, uh, Sam Kennison. You know, oh, the, God. Bob Sam Nelson. Kennison. You know, Emo Phillips. All those guys were just Who's the dude who's on the, like, always talk like he was pretending he was talking on the phone? Mm, on the phone. I, I don't know. Yeah. I yeah. There. Anyway. Uh but those guys, you know, so that's where my comedy built. And then, uh, you know, then, you know, Howard Stern and Jackie the Joke Man, that kind of stuff. But, you know, pretty much those 80s for comedy for me and 70s for music. Yeah. And yeah. here we are in 2019. <laughs> and you're still going to see people in, from the 70s in just music, ba- right? Just barely. Just barely. <laughs> just barely. What was your last concert? I see that. Um, what did I do? Because I know you go to a lot of shows, yeah, right? I, I, my last concert was, uh, oh, I just saw Three Dog Night. Two weeks ago, but there was only one dog left. Two of them were gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, they're, they're that took gonna, a little bit for me to bring in. <laughs> yeah, they're not going to put one dog night up on the uh, on the on the billboard. Yeah, they're not. Yeah. They're, I can't yeah. do that. But there's only one guy left. And uh, was he up there by himself, or did no? Or was just the guys, original. They okay. had guys yeah. fill in. You yeah, know, yeah. But it's not the same because yeah. you know those guys were killers. You know, 50 years of business, but you know people get old. And that's the challenging part. Like next week, Age I'm, going is undefeated. Doob- I'm going to see the Doobie Brothers, you know, and I've been seeing them for 40 years. Yeah, yeah. So it should be great, I hope, you know, if they can still put it out like they used to. But that's my love. You know, I, I love to laugh. I love music. That's what I do. Yeah, music is great. That's a yeah. big part of our life. Yeah. I, and I just love comedy and laughing. And yeah. I, any kind of com- stand-up comic, I'll go see. That's it. They're just clean ones, filthy ones, it don't matter. doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's fun. Yeah. As long as you're having fun, you know, they, these, these poor guys, you know, the, you know, and, and I was so happy because Seinfeld with all his success and believe me, not every, you know, I'm not a fan of that, but, but he's a tremendously successful Absolutely. guy who came from being a comic. Yeah. Right. And, uh, he stood up for today's comics because he refuses to play any colleges anymore because the colleges are putting a squash on people using jokes. You know, college like picking on people. Like, oh, yeah, you can't, say, you, know, you can't say this, you know. You know, oh, my you know, like, God forbid you say, hey, my, you know, I was dating this girl. She had one leg shorter than the other. Yeah, she was, her name was Eileen, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but then, then you got to think about it. Somebody in the audience is going, oh, my God, that's anti-woman. And B, you know, somebody's handicapped and you're making yeah. fun of the fact that one leg is shorter than the other. Well, what about that one in three million people who has one leg shorter than the other? <laughs> we got to think about, about that. that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Instead of, we don't want to offend that one person you'll never meet in your lifetime. Right. One of the, and if you do, you're glad you did. <laughs> I, would be, I would be like, oh my God, she is Eileen. <laughs> hey, what's your name, Eileen? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I finally met her. Can I get a picture? I need a selfie. <laughs> no, no, leave it a little. <laughs> uh, See, that's funny. Yeah, that's absolutely. Funny. Imagine if you get to meet the Eileen. Yeah, right. The girl who right. has one leg shorter than the other. That's comedy heaven. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, same same thing. I used to, I went to see Larry the Cable Guy. Uh, you know, you ever watch sure. him? Really? I can't remember his real name. He started as like a DJ. Or like, something like that, like, like a yeah, radio. He built the brand. Oh, and then they, it oh my god, that's exactly right. The yeah. Larry the Cable Guy was uh, a character on his radio show. 
that came in for like five minutes once a day. Oh, and then okay. that's how like that expanded. Right. So oh, now, that's great. but he's, I mean, what, what a great what, place to be trapped. Right. Larry that's the it? cable guy. Right. And, uh, I saw him separate outside of blue collar comedy tour. Right. So it was just him. So just me, that. Yeah. Out in Colorado. Was, yeah. And so, so me and some of the guys went to see him and funny, crazy, but totally politically just, off the rail, politically incorrect. At the time, I, don't, I haven't seen him in 20 years, what, 15 years, whatever it may be. So I don't know. But back then, I, he, one of the few <laughs> times that I was on one knee in front of my chair, leaning on the chair in front of me, just hyperventilating, right? Just funny. Just Dude. But his one of his jokes. Go ahead. I got one. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. His, his joke that sent, I swear I was going to pass out. My vision started to blur because uh, I was laughing so hard because I couldn't breathe. It was crazy. So he was like, yeah, I went to some uh, city or whatever, you know, because he's traveling, right? And he goes, I got attacked or mugged by a gang of uh, retards. And he's like, and the whole, seriously, the whole crowd just, <sighs> right? And here I'm going, <laughs> trying not to laugh just because. Because, you know, in a good comedy show, you start giggling and you just laugh at everything, right? Yeah. So it's just perfect. And he goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. He goes, I didn't mean to offend anybody. He says, you know, that's, you know, that's the word I use. And he says, I dated a retard once. He says, but it didn't, it didn't work out. And I can't do his, I can't do his timing, right? He's pacing it. time. But yeah. he goes, he goes, we just didn't see eye to eye. He says, I would say tomato, and she'd say bowling shoes, and I fuck, dude, I fucking lost it. Go, go on, dude, yeah. go on, just yeah. go on. But now try having to pull. You know, of course, yeah. retard is not a cool word, right? No. I mean, that's not. Uh, it's what it is. And in a comedy show, it's okay. In that setting, and I didn't you're see. You're going to see comedy. See, if somebody thrusts that upon you in the real world, when you go to a comedy act. Be prepared to hear something that could be offensive. Yeah. Or don't go. Yeah. Well, see, and that's the other thing. Don't go. Don't go. Right? If you don't If you're going to get offended by something like don't that, go. just don't go. Howard Stern said it best. Best thing I ever heard in comedy. You know, he used to, people used to fight him because what his radio show was all about. And he would say, turn the turn dial. Turn yeah. the dial. Turn it off. Turn it off. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. listen, I, I, got, I got to give you my Larry the Cable guy, though. Because yeah, my sister, I tell you, she got real fat. She boy, she got fat. She goes, when she went and got a belly button pierced, they used an onion ring. <laughs> <laughs> he used to pick on his family all the time about fat, being fat. Look at the visual of that. <laughs> he used an onion ring. <laughs> <laughs> See, my, that's funny. Yeah, that's yeah. Funny. So my you know, my my favorite comic, Rodney Carrington, uh if you're listening, I'd love to have you on. One, I've seen him live a bunch of times uh, out in Colorado, and then he's a big. Well, he was a big golfer. I don't know if he is now, but we sent him a. Me and the boys, we sent him an email and tried calling him and stuff. Say, hey man, because I worked at Coca Cola at the time and had some access to some really nice golf courses. And my boss at the time's like, let's see if we can get him before he comes to the show, like the day before, so I'm go golfing with him. You know, that would have yeah. been cool. Got an email back like two days later. I don't know if it was from his PR company or whatever it was, but it was signed off as Rodney. Again, you don't know who's actually doing it. But it was very well, you know. He said, hey, man, I appreciate it, but my tight schedule maybe in the future, you know. And it went on a little more. But anyway, one of, one of his fat jokes, man. He goes, I took this girl home one night. He was, she, she was, she was easier to go over than around. <laughs> and she laid on the bed. And whipped the, whipped the comforter off and said, get after it. And this man, I fucked the shit out of that comforter. <laughs> well, How can you not laugh at that stuff, well, man? Yeah, you know, all, all those things. You know, listen, it, it's everybody has something about them, you know, that's, uh, you know, you can pick on anybody for everything and anything because we're all imperfect. Yeah. Every single one of us, even the comics standing up there. You know, one thing I tell you about comics, most comics, they're very uh, shy, fearful people. On stage, they become these killers. Backstage, they won't even be able to look you in the eye. Yeah. And I've met many of them. They're so I've heard that too. Yeah. yeah heard that too. So, you know, but it, like I said, it's uh, I like to have fun. And you can have fun at my expense, and I'll have fun at your expense. That's yeah. the way I look at life. Yeah, yeah. It's a give and take. Yep. Make fun yeah. of me. 
Go ahead. Yeah. I'm six foot four. I got a giant head. <laughs> you know what they say about a guy with a big head? Yeah, he's got a big head. Where's the big hat? <laughs> well, look. Well, I know you're a glug for punishment. You got a New York Rangers jersey. Uh, I had to throw that in there. Man. I don't know anything about hockey. Yeah. Um, that, so, but I just had to jab you a little. Yeah, bit. guys. Yeah, guys like you know nothing about hockey. I get it. It's a wow. uh, it's a man's sport. I play. Uh, yeah. No, I'm saying. <laughs> I uh, my my life. I like I said since I'm a kid. My brother-in-law came into my life. Love the Rangers, New York Rangers. Always have. Love ice hockey. Love the New York Yankees. It's my life. You know, 50 years now. You know, hanging out, watching the Yankees, watching the Rangers. Yeah, I love sports. It's great entertainment. And uh, that's what I do. It's my life, really, pretty much easy. Got a got a dream life, huh? Yeah, you know what? I really do. Except that I, uh, <laughs> I've always loved hockey, and you know, my wife and my kids who grew up with hockey and. So just the other day, day, I had this great idea to take the family. Uh, four of us went to a Ranger game. It cost me seven hundred dollars. Damn, dude. Yeah, damn. And that's with an eighty dollar dinner because we got gyros instead of going to a restaurant. <laughs> Off the food truck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Street meat. Street meat. Street oh, meat. street meat. Street meat. Yeah. If you've never been to New York, have uh, street meat. That's a, uh, that's a trip for itself. Man. Yeah, you get some hairy chicken wings that still got the feathers on. Oh, them. they're the best. Oh, really? okay, Joe. So real quick, back to Robbie Carrington. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Rocky Mountain oysters. Hey. You know what those are? Yeah, I should do. Okay. He goes, I tried those, and he goes, they taste like chicken. He said, everything tastes like chicken, you know, this, that. And he has a little skit. And he goes, unless you're really drunk and adventurous, he goes, give me some of them bull nuts and leave the hair on them. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a lot of nasty stuff. But, yeah, so, you know, it's not the same anymore, you know, going to a sporting event. It cost you, man. Yeah. Well, Jesus. I mean, look at some of these guys and ladies that are making, you know, how many millions of dollars a year? Uh, Somebody's got to pay for that. God, man. Right? Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's more uh, it's more about the entertainment value now than it was the sport. Years ago, it was the sport. Baseball stood on its own. Hockey stood on its own. Now it's more of an entertainment thing where it's got to be expanded beyond the game. Because people's brains are wired differently now. You're yeah. not going to get a kid to sit through a four-hour baseball game anymore. No. You know no. what I mean? I would go and just hang out in the stands. That was what I was doing that day. Yeah, yeah. You know? Now yeah. a kid after an hour, what's he want to do? He's going crazy. He's well, the uh, uh, thing my dad and I talk about all the time with football nowadays, mm -hmm. with the NFL, it's seven days a week. You don't. When I grew up, oh. well, it was Sunday. That was it. Oh. Sunday. That's all you had. You oh, watched it on Sunday. You couldn't wait. Monday night football or Monday. Was special. Yeah, yeah. Special. Monday night special. Right? And he, that I'm going to quote my dad because he, he says it all the time, is he believes that it's not going to be too long before football is like NASCAR. Mm -hmm. Okay? So NASCAR is big still, right? But in a certain group of people. Right. Right? He, he thinks that. Football is going to not be like a national pastime like it has been, or yeah. like baseball. It's going to yeah. kind of – because people – you just drowned it. You're uh -huh. just getting drowned it every day. Every day. Every day. And, and you like, can watch oh. every game on every channel. Right. You know, when I was a kid, you know, you got one Yankee game, two Yankee games. We listened on the radio, and it was – you know, if you were lucky, they, they broadcast a Yankee game, right? And the game of the week was always on Saturday. So, like, you would never see, like, the Oakland A's or teams like that. Never. Yeah, it wasn't yeah, on yeah. television. Now you can get every game, game possible. But I have to tell you, you know, we love talking sports, and I've been talking about this a lot. Here's something I really understand. Vince McMahon. You know who Vince McMahon is? Of course. Right. The, uh, the leader of the WWE, CEO. Now, I just saw the other day, this guy's a genius. It's uh, $2.6 billion he's worth with the WWE. Two point six billion yeah. with a B. Billion dollars, Vince McMahon. So Vince McMahon decided years ago, when I was a kid, I watched wrestling, it was great. Gorilla Monsoon, you know, all those guys, <laughs> you know, Bruno San Martino, Andre the Giant. Yeah, you they they made you live into it that it was real wrestling and it was really happening. And then the genius of Vince McMahon said, Well the heck with this. We're gonna create this called the sports entertainment. We're going to turn it into sports entertainment. Yeah, yeah. So he made all this money. So I'm watching now and I see baseball and hockey and football. They're all buying into it. 
that it's now sports entertainment. The game itself is a part of it, but it's the entertainment that goes along with it. And that's where the money's being made now, is they're all turning towards sports entertainment because he's getting back into football again. Well, didn't he, what was it, years ago he did that XXL yeah, or something yeah. like that? And, and now he's tried it. And, right, it didn't work because people weren't ready for sports entertainment when it came to football. Right. Now so they are. Now they are. Yeah, yeah. Now they are. And I, I got to share this with you. I never knew what it was, but I'm flicking through the channels and it looked like a real football game, right? And I'm watching. And it was it was the championships of Madden football. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Dude, it was fun to watch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I was, in, I was playing poker yesterday. As you know, you both you uh, and I enjoy cards. Yeah. And... I'm in a league, and in this room, they had all these TVs, you know, just like in a like in a uh, event room. Half the TVs were basketball Final Four, because that's what's going on right now. Right. The other half was a combination of Matt, like Madden, like that. Mm -hmm. It's funny yeah. you bring that up. And then just video games in general, like different, different yeah. stuff. And there's these teams of six or seven young kids – that that's the team, and they're and they're, you know people are watching them play this sport, right? Amazing. And it was it was funny. I kind of flipped it on a guy sitting next to me at the table because it was like up on the wall and, uh, above us, and he's like, "Man, who who watches this? How can somebody watch this?" And I and I turn and I look at him. And I go, "How many hours a week do you sit and watch poker on TV?" He goes, "Well, four or five. I go, "It's the same <laughs> thing." Yeah. You're, that just that's interesting to a lot of people. Oh, or no. one, they wouldn't have it on there if it wasn't interesting. Yeah, no, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, game, man. and the talent these kids. I'm just watching. I'm like, oh, that's. I never right saw it head. before. This was just two days ago. I've never seen it before. It came on my television. I'm looking. Oh, it's a football game. And I look. To tell you what, it's funny. For a while, you got to look because the graphics are so good. Oh and, yeah, and, and yeah, the yeah. actions that the guys do when they get tackled and get hit on the ground. And, it's amazing. So it was like life changing to me because I've never been a video game guy. You know, I was I, never a video game. Yeah. Guy. So, but to watch this, it's it's fascinating to watch. So maybe these kids will be something. They'll be a uh, Madden NFL or someday. Well, uh, too. The way I look at it is you and I growing up. I assume you you correct me if I'm wrong. Grew up the same way. Like outside, you know, the whole cliche thing: outside till dark, and sure. you know, climbing trees, doing whatever. Yeah. I read one time that it. That that at those activities are so, problem solving activities. Oh, you they don't, certainly you, are. You don't think about it when you're doing it oh, as a no, kid. No. You know, you're just like, how the hell do I get to the top of this tree, or how do I yep. build this fort? Yep. And you figure it out, right? And you figure it out. And you Great don't way know. to look at it. But is that the new? Is nowadays? Look look at these kids doing these video games. They're problem solving. Sure, it's not a yeah. physical. They're not swinging a hammer or climbing a tree. Sure, they're problem solving. But they're problem solving. And they're thinking. It's critical thinking. But you know, and, they, and it's a group activity. But we also, <laughs> but we also have to get back to uh, you know people to people skills, that yeah. kind of a thing. Yeah. And I, that's what starts to slip a little bit, you know, with it. But uh, yeah, these kids are thinking. But I, you know, I just I just wrote a story about this because you know when I'm doing my talks and stuff, you know. I grew up and I, and I started to roller skate because I wanted to play hockey. So I started to play roller skate, but I grew up in the city. And I don't know about you, but concrete hurts. So every time you would skate and hit the concrete, we didn't have pads or anything. You yeah, hit the yeah. concrete, you get scraped, you get cut up, you get up. And what you do? You learn how not to fall <laughs> because falling hurt. hurt. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So the lesson was if you don't want to get hurt, either take the skates off or learn how, how to skate. skate. Yeah. And you know what? I think about it all the time. Scraped up, banged up. That's how we learn. Well, you turned out oh, kind of okay. Well, I hit my head a couple of times. Yeah. Riding yeah. bicycles. Did yeah. you like? Did you build those ramps? I, like I, I, no, no. I want to tell you something. And I, I challenge. <laughs> all right, parents, go let your kids listen to this. <laughs> I challenge you to ride a bike. Oh, with a loose handlebar and no chain. Oh, which, <laughs> <laughs> which means you have no brakes. And there's a chance that if the handlebars hit a bump, they're going to go, go forward on you. And you just yeah, go yeah. over the front of the bike. And you go, oh, wait, this is a bad moment in my life. <laughs> yeah. What did I decide to give I had gravel embedded in every part of my oh, body yeah. from going over and just turning and turning and turning. Oh, and you ever have the, the brush to get them out? <laughs> you ever, you know, yeah. Ooh. You're just constantly taking gravel out of your back. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, when's the last time you heard of a kid with gravel in their back? Yeah. Uh, 
I don't know. I can't. I don't know. No, I think when when my buddies and I talk about the shit we used to do. Are you allowed to have gravel anymore anywhere? Is it against the law? Yeah, yeah. Excuse me, just gravel on your property. Yeah. <laughs> you can't have that because you might hurt yeah, somebody. Yeah, I grind my kid's face in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, the same thing. Growing up, be like, we, nobody was the voice of reason. Ah. Like, dry, riding dirt bikes and four-wheelers ah. and snowmobiles, we'd be like, we'd see this big hill, you know, that was completely unsafe. Oh. And you go... This did not happen. Man, I don't think we should do that. It's unsafe. This is what happened. You're a bitch if you can't get to the top. <laughs> it was amazing. Dude. We all turned out all right. Well, well, it depends on who you I'll give you another one. When we were kids, so we have, you know, I lived in Hudson County. So, you know, we were right on the river, on the cliffs, the Palisades, right across from New York City. Yeah. So, you know, the cliffs where we would hang out, we weren't supposed to be. My parents heard the cliffs. You were in trouble. You know, just a lot of bad things went on the cliffs. You know, yeah. but we had this place called the ropes, and it the was cl- rope. the ropes at the cliffs. The ropes at the cliffs, <laughs> but it was one of those gym ropes. You know, with the big knot at the bottom, right? Oh, okay. So you want you want to talk about like nutty, right? So <laughs> there's a cliff. Is this going to be a metaphor? Nutty? Well, no, 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 no. But I got to tell you this: you say you don't think, and you just do, right? So, so the rope. You were on the cliff, and you roped out. Yeah, right. We did the same, yeah, we did now, the reservoir. When you roped out, there was no water. You roped out. Oh, oh yeah, we did. We, so, had we had so water. So the biggest problem was if you roped out and wussed out, you'd have forty feet underneath you. The secret was to go out and make sure you got back and jumped back onto the cliff. So if you if you pushed out jumping back onto the cliff, you <laughs> swung back out and probably weren't coming back. You weren't coming back. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. the secret was to get as much momentum out. That coming back, you could jump off and get back onto the cliff. Yeah, and oh yeah, and it was literally just like a little rope that hung, you know, that we could get the rope back up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like crazy, and we'd go hang out at the ropes. And now I really, you you think about it, I understand it. It, It's you're asking for a semi death, you know what I mean? (laughs) And we did a lot of that stuff. And I I guess I could, I guess I could understand why you wouldn't want to. I I get it. Would I do it now? I don't think well, so. would you would you grow uh, when you when your kids were growing up? Would you want them doing it? Not if I knew it, because it makes no sense. It yeah, was but, just pure adrenaline junkies. That's all. Oh, so yeah, whatever way it was, yeah. you know, and challenging the norm. You know, we didn't have, and that's another thing. Kids of today, they got a lot of other things to do. And yeah. I, I dare to put it this way: normal things. We didn't have things. We didn't have people. Didn't put up things. Yeah, you know, like look at today. You know, monkey bars. Right? I think they took them out of playground. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was like the greatest thing ever. Right. Yeah. yeah. Seesaw, right? You get into seesaw. Was... <laughs> you get your friend up in the air, right? And the only thing you're going to do is step away. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. And then the merry-go-round, which is oh, the, uh, the death machine, you right? Puke? <laughs> you don't let that one kid off because he's on it. You and your friends just spinning it, right? Yeah. Like, ah. Wow. Wow. Woo, and, the only, and the only way they can get off is to jump, literally just jump. Jump. <laughs> yeah. Into the monkey bars. <laughs> Into the monkey bars. I don't know, saw horse. Oh, yeah, man. But yeah, my mom would be like, you can stay in the house, but you're going to help me clean. Gone. Gone. Yeah. Yeah. Moms were different. My mom would walk in the house, or she'd come out of her room and just go, what are you doing in the house? Yeah. We'd never yeah. respond. It was just, okay. Yeah. Gone. 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 I remember I got a dirt bike, and I was riding around the yard, oh, no. and my mom comes out and goes, get out of the yard, you're ruining the grass. <laughs> Don't ruin somebody else's yeah. lawn, you moron. We live here, you yeah. jerk. Look at you. So I had to go out in the woods and, you know, crash yeah. and have a good time. But hit a yeah. tree or two, hit a stump. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we just, it was interesting. Even, you know, the memories. This is great, you know. When we sat down here today, I had no idea where we'd go. But great memories of what we used to do. You know, ice skating, right? You know, how we tested the ice, right? You mm-hmm. stepped on it. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought about it. You, you, you put your, oh, your foot comes out wet. No skating. It's true. You went up there, you, you took a shot. Yeah. So what we used to do is get the biggest, heaviest rock and like throw it way up in the air and let it hit the ice. And then uh-huh. you're like, and pray. And pray. Yeah. And you're like, okay, it didn't crack. It's another so, thing, you know. We, uh, you know, we didn't have any rinks. So you went and you, you skated on the ice. You shoveled off the... You know, now everywhere I go, it, it, throughout New Jersey, you see a beautiful pond somewhere, and there's signs up that say no skating. And I'm like, because wow. somebody's gonna fall through and sue somebody. You know it's that the, whole it's thing. The, you know, yeah. 
Yeah. I, I'd rather see the sign that says, big, big sign, that says, skate at your own risk. I, I'd love to see that, where, yeah. hey, we told you not to skate here. You know? Yeah. You didn't yeah. see the sign. Because what it, does, what it does is, you talk about common sense, right? If it says, skate at your own risk, then you skate at your own risk. Dar no, Darwin gets involved there, huh? Yeah. What's the difference between skate at your own risk and uh, do not skate? Somebody goes on there and skates anyway, they can still sue you because you have your pond was exposed to people <laughs> you know oh yeah, there's always an angle oh my god how could you have a pond here you know yeah, yeah, that's yeah, where well, we become yeah yeah well, my, well, my kid of course my kid was on your pond there was a pond of course he was <laughs> yeah. wow it's the closest yeah. pond in 50 miles of course you said wait a parent lady <laughs> it's a pond yeah yeah it's a pond so one lady. thing one thing though talking about ice growing up uh did a lot of snowmobile uh, up and upstate new york and one thing I would never do is go across the ice on a snowmobile. Hands down. I don't care. Like, we were coming, we would come up on this trail. You know, mm -hmm. we were going on a trail. And at the bar, because you always just bar hopping. That's all you're doing. <laughs> and at 14. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's, it's, hey, he's got facial hair. It would be a, <laughs> yeah. So, the bars across the pond. Everybody, zoom, 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 go across the pond. Now, people have been riding uh, snowmobiles across this pond all day, all night. And I'm like, I said, you know what, guys, I'll catch up with you. Well, the long way is going to take you an X amount of time. No, no problem, dude. Yeah. I had this, still have this fear. Could you imagine cruising across a pond on a snowmobile, yep. in a snowmobile suit, yep. in three layers of clothes, with a helmet on, and heavy boots, and fall into fucking freezing water? Yeah. I'm good, man. Uh, Check. No, yeah. I'll, I'll, take, I'll take 20 minutes to go around. Yeah. I'm good. Depends on where you, it depends on where you live. You know, you see places in Minnesota where they they, they build uh, shacks and they fish out there and they stay out there, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah you see that? They build yeah. the fishing spots and stuff. It's amazing. There you go. But, uh, um, yeah, there's guys with... I never got ice fishing. Is that just a reason to drink? You know what? It, it's it's a lifestyle for some people. Like, on the... On the Upstate New York and upstate like Michigan, like Minnesota, yeah, and Minnesota, UP Michigan, and all that. You know, it's 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 like where they go to hang out. Like, so yeah, could it be hanging out with the guys? But there's guys that take it very, very seriously. Sure, yeah, yeah. I mean, they they put houses up there. They have heat inside them, right? They fish, and all it is is you take. I wouldn't even call it fishing. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, they they drop a line. A hole, dry, you, they got tip ups. They, the thing goes up if you have a fish on it. But yeah, yeah you know, and it was never for me. But then we didn't grow up that way. Yeah, that's all it is. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess too. That somebody would look at the way I grew up and like that's not the yeah, way I grew I up. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. And the further you go north, you know, again, what do you have to do in the winter time, really? And you the winters are so long. So long. you can't even get around. So it's yeah, actually it's good to go out. You know. Yeah, yeah. Get out of the house. Yeah, it's interesting over. up there, like Buffalo, man. It's like you, oh, you, you know, people Buffalo. say, "How do you live in Buffalo?" I don't know how you live. In Buffalo. My friend called me one day. There's like three feet of snow. So yeah, I mean, that's, how I grew, that's how I grew up. Three feet of snow on top of three feet of snow on top of three feet of snow. I went to hey, I went to upstate public school in New York, and that's nine feet. Wow. Just so you know. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> but no, that's, I lived up that way. I lived up. Just got to. Hey, thank you. Catch up, man. Catch up. Um, that no, that's where I grew up. Is upstate New York. And I was used to dealing with that yeah, you know, every day. Crazy, you know, six months a year. Yeah, you know they don't even shovel. They don't even plow the roads. Yeah, they just yeah, leave right, the snow. Yeah, drive right on the snow. Snow down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. which is yeah. interesting. It's a great yeah. way to look at it. It's yeah. Different yeah. lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. You know, it's like people down in Florida, or somebody up in Michigan might look at somebody down in Arizona and be like, "Man, how do you do that heat all day long?" Oh, you know, yeah, same thing. So it all depends on what you do. It's one of my favorite things. One time I went to Vegas. I'm a golf. One time you were in Vegas. <laughs> and, uh, I, uh, so we're on a golf course. It's like 110. Yeah, the guy's like, he goes, well, you know, it's a dry heat. I go, it's 110 fucking degrees. <laughs> so my buddy, I got a, I got it's 110. It was same exact thing. We come come out. We, come we come out. My buddy and I, we're, we're, we're in Vegas. Just take it, take it. Catch up in Vegas. Vegas. So take it for what it is. Uh, we come out at like no, that's where I grew one o'clock in the morning. We get in this cab. The outside temperatures it says 110, yeah, uh, and and uh, Smitty, yeah, my, my buddy, goes, yeah, yeah. Ah, it's yeah, and it was hot, God, yeah, 110, and the cabbie goes, it's a dry heat, right? And my buddy Smitty, without even without even blinking, he goes, so's a convection oven, but I wouldn't hang out in that. <laughs> it's so true. 
I, I, that's my favorite thing. Oh, it's a dry, dry heat. Gosh, it's, it's hot. <laughs> I'm white as rice. Yeah, when yeah. I'm out there, I'm cooking no matter where. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It ain't yeah. safe for me. <laughs> you, you a big fan of Vegas? Dry heat. Um, it's a hundred and yeah, yeah, I am. Uh, so my, I, I like to go in a sensible way, you know. I love to play cards, yeah. Yeah. so if, if I go and I've seen some great shows, I've eaten some great restaurants, it's the kind of thing that uh, small doses, yeah, I wouldn't want to see. I, I like to visit, I certainly wouldn't want to stay there, uh, but to go out for a reason. And speaking of that, uh, Aerosmith is gonna stay out there. Uh, oh, they got like a gig, yeah, they're gonna stay. What hotel? I think it's at the Hard Rock. Ooh. So, you know, I'll be out there. Room. It's a yeah, great poker room. Yeah, hard rocks. Great poker room. Right? Yeah, sure. my buddy I got some hard rock stories that'll stay even. right here. Thank you. <laughs> and, <laughs> and moving on. <laughs> and moving on. <laughs> I actually, well, so, actually I, yeah, the thing. hard rock is a giant wild, wild, wild time. It's, it's, it's fun. It's but we'll get off that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, the la the, my last Vegas trip was like um, the way I like to be in Vegas. Yeah, my I wife am. and I went out there, I, I, met I my best friend and his know, wife, my so father-in-law, my wife's father, met us out there. We saw some shows. great shows, yep. ate yeah, some that, um, amazing food, yeah. Yeah. and I wouldn't want to see I've spent like so much time in Vegas, I, I tend to take stuff for granted, but when I was with my wife and her dad, seeing Vegas through their eyes, they were completely dumbfounded by some of the stuff so, that's yeah, out there, yeah, you know, some of the grand yeah, stuff that obviously that they put together, well, it's right? It's bigger than life. Thanks. Yeah, and then, of course, of course right I spent some time in the car. <laughs> and moving on. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, like, a bit of a trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always yeah. like that. That's exactly what happened. Yeah. People are like, how much you bring home? Not a penny. It's fun. Yeah, that's what it's for. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so that, those are, that's how I like to go to Vegas nowadays. I'm back in the day playing sports and and really gambling and doing all that. It was, when I was in Colorado, it was a $70 round trip air uh, to Vegas from Thursday to Sunday. It's like a bus trip. Not bad. It's like, how can, and it's an hour flight. Yeah. It's like, how can you not go? <laughs> well, you know what? It, you know, we enjoy playing cards. That's the one thing that people don't understand. I am not uh, at, at any means addicted to it, to where I have to do it. Yeah, I shut down. Well, we I both have, have addictive personalities. Yeah, so. we both do. Yeah, I get it. But when it comes to poker, um, I can walk away. Yeah, sure. I, I, you know, I can. And, yeah. uh, because I want to continue to enjoy it. Yeah. So if I control poker, it's fun. If poker controls me, it's no longer fun. Yeah, but isn't that true with just about anything? But everything. Yeah. yeah. So that's why when I look at it, I, I want to have fun. So And so that's why when I go play poker, usually, you know, I, I could be up three, four hundred dollars and say, you yeah, know, that's good. Yeah, no, I'm good. And I'll walk away. You know, I just to put, put, why not go home with 400 bucks? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, absolutely. have to be an all-night venture anymore for me. No, I, I played in uh, a couple weeks ago, our buddy Don, and yeah. I went to, a, we played in a local yeah, tournament. Like, how can you not go? Just got my ass <laughs> in the, well, in the you tournament, know it, you know. You know, we enjoy playing uh, cards. Yeah, you can't win everything. everything. You yeah. can win everything, where would you be, I right? Not, and, uh, and actually, I think it would take the fun out of it if you were winning all the time. You gotta have the up and down, right? The swings are crazy. But then I sat down at the cash game with 40 bucks and um, walked away with like 400 away. bucks <laughs> so i was like you know in, in like 45 minutes and joking i like look at my wrist and i don't have a picture i watch i'm like fellas i think it's time for me to cash out and they're all like well oh, hey where are you going you don't stay longer i'm like eh, whoop, gone you know and it's like yeah put it in your pocket play, play another absolutely, day absolutely but the way i look at cards is and for me it's entertainment yeah it's it's, it's like what i love it yeah it's like what people would do to go to the movies no, or to the whatever they do for entertainment. Yeah. Take, whatever you take, whatever entertainment. So yesterday, in the tournament, uh, per, uh, for an example, because I just played, and everything. You could win uh, everything. Where would you be, right? and went down, and actually, spent think it would four and a half hours, hours had some great yeah, laughs, right? bunch yeah, of great people. AC? Anyway. No, down in uh, down, at the cash game. down south on the parkway. It's a it's in a like a little venue. It's a league. Oh, cool! Yes. Like forty five minutes. And joking, I like what you do is you get you, you earn points through the league like, through the weeks of league league, and then you, you know, the final game is points and it's all that stuff. But so I ended up taking first place, you know, and, like, and uh, yeah, and there's always a little cash. Well, it's not cash. It wipes out your bar tab. 
Because so, <laughs> so much goes to your bar tab. They have a dollar amount that says, hey, like does you what, apply this to your bar yeah, tab. Like well, my bar tab was half the amount because yeah. I don't drink. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I said, you know what, man? And the bartender, I said, he's a so super good guy. I was like, hey, put a drink on for you. And another buddy of mine, I said, put a drink on for him. And by the time I did that, I think it was like a $6 day. Four and a half and you know there's some guys there that have to put extra money into their bar tab. <laughs> What's can't, that? They can't possibly no, win no, enough no, to come. No, the bar tab. tab. Oh, no, God, no. <laughs> These guys will tell horror stories. They'll be at the, at the oh, table yeah. and they're like, oh, yeah. yeah, that applies to my bar tab and it didn't <laughs> even put a <laughs> thing in there. You know? But, I mean, on that subject, look at look at that. Neither you or I drink. I, I, I look at that every month so when I, I do my budget. First place. Oh, my God. And I could When I first and stopped drinking, yeah. well, it's it's it took me about three, four months to realize <laughs> the amount of money. So much goes I was looking at my budget. They have a dollar amount. So yeah, three, four months. I was like, man, did I fucking forget well, to pay my something? Tab was mm. half the you know? I was like, God, that's a lot of money yeah. still in my checking account. Yeah. What's, yeah. what's going on here? I said, you know what, it is. I mean, I... Hey, dr yeah, going back to drink on for you, that's what you do, that's what you do. I, you know, I don't drink. That's yeah, what I, I, I and, 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 and what you're talking about, realistically, it's one of two things. A, you spend less, but the other thing is, uh, you know, when you, if you're struggling with drinking, and then, then all of a sudden, bar tab. Oh, no, God, no. doesn't drink. The guys will tell that comes with the table, and they're like, so, yeah, that applies to my bar tab, and you're responsible for managing them, so. Which is but pretty cool because sometimes you don't even realize how much you spend. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think that's the greatest part about what went on in my world, you know, is, uh, you know, getting rid of, uh, you know, the drinking. You know, I, I became responsible. You know, you know my story. Yeah, yeah. It was challenging. You know, I had three kids. I was still drinking. One of each. Yeah, had three kids. <laughs> <laughs> the way I well, was doing that was possible. <laughs> Literally. But that's a that's a whole. I want to have you back, and that's yeah. a whole other story. Yeah, about. yeah. This was this was great, man. I, uh, this was nice. It was just having a conversation. Ah, that's all it is. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate yeah. you. Know, well, you too, thanks uh, for coming down, hanging out with me. We always we always have fun hanging out. And I mean that because you know what? I I, I, I always think I prepare sure. myself. You know, I always want an agenda, and we didn't have one. So no, that's I have no idea what happened, but it was great. Yeah, that's the whole point, right? Yeah, right. yeah. That's I like point. it a lot. All right, buddy. Thanks for having me. All right, man. Sometimes you don't even realize how much you're spending. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think that's the greatest part about what went on in my world, you know, is, uh, you know, getting rid of, uh, you know, the drinking. You know, I, I became responsible. You, you know my story. Yeah, it, was, yeah. it was challenging. You know, I had three kids. I was still drinking. One of each. Yeah, yeah three kids. <laughs> <laughs> the way I well, was going, that was possible. <laughs> Literally. But that's a that's a whole. I want to have you back, and that's yeah. a whole other story. Yeah, about. you know this was this was great, man. I uh, this was nice. It was just having a that's conversation. Just, ah, that's all it is. And, yeah, uh, I appreciate yeah. you. Know, thanks uh, for coming uh, down, hanging out with me. We always we always have this fun hanging out. And I mean that because you know what? I, I I I always think I prepare myself. You know, I always want an agenda, and we didn't have one. No, I have point. no idea what happened, but it was great. Yeah, that's <laughs> the whole point, right? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah that's I like point. it a lot. All right, buddy. Thanks for having me. All right, man.